Welcome back. And that's where we take off from. Uh, we've got uh, Dr. Jumake Uduole, who is the uh, estate to the President on Trade and Investment, Office of the Vice President. And uh, Mr. Bolaji Ogunsha, a Sustainable Development Economist. Thank you. Welcome to the program. And thank you for joining us, uh, Mr. Bolaji. Let, let's look at this matter now. Let me even start from the States, because I know we've talked about this previously <coughs> in terms of how important it is for States to key into this, because a lot of the businesses will be done in States. What kind of cooperation or successes could you say were recorded in that respect? Uh, morning, and thanks for having me back. The states, we started working with the states since July last year. And you saw just previously in the footage, Cardinal State hosting Northwestern states. It was very well attended. Almost all the states turned up. They all have state reform champions of ease of doing business, and they have structures in place. For instance, Cardinal State, their own committee is chaired by the deputy governor. And that's why <coughs> I came to open that workshop. They've been working in collaboration with the federal government to make sure that we align what we're doing, whether it's from consolidation of taxes, whether it's getting credit, fostering different reforms at the state level now, so that businesses that move across state lines have the same kind of attractiveness across the country. Let's connect this to that national action plan uh, that you do have, and still on taxes. I know that we, different people have talked about the importance of us doing something about multiple taxation. Does that come under the purview or do you, are you considering brushing that topic at all? The National Action Plan that started last week on the 5th of February has a number of interventions that we've laid out. Actually, we mapped out the plan from September in 2017. We mapped out our strategic plan for the year. But what I would say about paying taxes and consolidation of taxes is that the National Assembly wants to actually float a, a bill on harmonization of tax administration. So that's going to be a landmark, and we're really supporting that. We're members of the technical committee that was inaugurated uh, two weeks ago, and work has already started. So this is another example of collaboration between federal and, and state governments and also the legislature to look around at what would make things easier for businesses and start taking them systematically. So a tax harmonization bill would definitely be a landmark in that regard. Yeah. Let's talk about the new plan. Um, the previous ones uh, <coughs> was able to take us 24 uh, steps up and uh, from uh, about 168 to, is it 168 yeah. to 142? 25 yeah. steps. Now, this new plan is seen as the third one that you're going to be um, uh, carrying out. What's the plan? Where, where do you hope this will take us to next? Okay. So the first national action plan, we were together this time last year. And it was the interventions that we did between February and April, the quick wins that we mopped up, that really took us 24 places last year. By the time the results were out, we were already in the middle of our second national action plan because we started a new reform cycle in September. That's what I just alluded to. We have our whole strategic plan. This third national action plan is again part of the system. We're going through systemic steps. <coughs> what we're looking for basically, I mean, Trying to have a target of another 20 places is not actually ambitious enough to be candid. We're going sub-100 by 2020. That's the plan that we set ourselves in the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. Last year, Mr. President gave us the mandate to move up 20 places because that's the sub-Saharan average. Now we're within the average. But where we want to be is under 100 by 2020. You know, there's this, that, the tax issue now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you're, you're talking about... This is the third national action plan. Mm -hmm. So the issue of tax harmonization would have come into play, I'm, I'm very sure, even from the first action plan. Because it's been said that this multiple taxation regime has sent many companies running from the state and they're looking for how to settle in Abuja because they feel like, let's just get to a place where we'll pay just one level of tax and not have to do multiple levels of taxation. So how, what's the timeline to have that harmonization bill come through? The National Assembly intends to pass that bill this year. But we're talking about a number of different issues. You know we're a federation, so you're talking about issues at the federal level, issues at the state level, and the local government level. When you talk about, I mean, Mr. Fowler, FRS will always tell you, when you talk about multiplicity of taxes, actually maybe not so, because there are different uh, levels of government that can tax you. So it's not that you're being taxed twice for the same, because that's what multiple yeah. taxation but, actually okay. is. And then some are charges, some are levies. But what we can do to make things easier for businesses 
is to consolidate the payment of tax. What is actually irritating is not knowing clearly what you need to pay and then having a lot of tax administration about, you know, 40-something steps. But are the states buying into this idea of consolidating the uh, different levies and taxes that you need to pay? Uh, yes. Kaduna State already has a tax harmonization uh, law that was passed last year. Um, different states, we've been speaking with legal state, uh, Mr. Subar, definitely they have those kinds of plans. And the, the states know that this is, especially the states that are commercial hubs, they know that this is something that affects their businesses and their business climate, and they're taking it quite seriously. Working together as a joint tax board, also chaired by Mr. Fowler, they've also been talking about, because there are a number of levies and charges when you move your goods from one part of the country to another. As you pass state lines, there are also some charges. So they've been working yeah. about harmonizing those kinds of things also. Mr. Gusha, you look through this plan. Uh, what kind of role do you see it doing or playing in terms of sustainably developing our economy? Well, I mean, look, the plan is good. I've always said, I doubt there is any government, that there is any government that comes to power wanting to really do things down and, you know, cause inflation and, you know, um, deepen the, the, the challenges of uh, ease of doing business and all of this. So, you know, governments start out with positive intentions. So that's, that's a given. Um, and it's good that governments should make uh, progress and success from time to time based on the interventions and the various programs and projects that they're doing. In the case of Nigeria, while these facts remain true, I think every government, not just this government, has to be careful to watch out a bit for, for some level of hubris, you know, a sense of hubris with achievements or how you talk up your achievement and everything. You have to relate that to, after all, what is the core objective of governance in a developing country like Nigeria. And the core objective, really, is to get the economy into a transition mode, okay? We are pre-industrial, as we are right now. We need to transit to an industrial status, right? So for me, the highest organizing principle for governance and for policymaking should be um, to bring all these various factors together. You can't do it in one fell swoop. You can't do it in one month or even one year. But to have a mechanism in place that enables the pulling together, do you understand, of this system in an ongoing way with the aim of positioning the economy, the entire economy, all parts of it, okay, for transition. We are not in transition mode yet. Because for you to do that, it's not just a ease of doing business. I'm very happy to see that we are putting in place all these plans and things to make progress. And we've made some progress. Mind you, though, the toxins, the policy toxins and the capacity toxins, the ability to make your intentions happen, to make your policy, you know, anchors into facts on ground and in a sustainable and ongoing way. That capacity is always affected in Nigeria by, look, you do one here, there are other parts of the system that are supplying, you know, radioactive material to undermine what you're doing now. Do you understand? I'll give you an example. Look, we were 145 before. Every government has a need to sort of look good, encourage us, and all of this is good to say, look, something is happening, you know, but especially on ours. It didn't happen before. In 2013, we were in this same territory. 145 rank, right? But we then came back to 169, 171, and then we're back now and think. So it's that kind of yo-yo that you need an overarching organizing principle that you, is you pulling. This, this NAP can provide that overarching principle? I want it to provide that. Like yesterday, I want it. We, I need it as a Nigerian. But you don't see it providing it yet? 
I don't see it providing yet, number one. Number two, government, all governments. I saw it during the Jonathan, during Obama. All governments need to manage better the tendency for hubris to what? say that we have done it. Yeah. We are doing you know, things. Let, you must look. I'm happy that was only once she mentioned the, the word systemic. And I like that. Okay, but why didn't you see it providing it yet? Well, look, every economy has three layers. And governments need to take cognizance of every economy. No, not every economy. That's not true. A developing economy like Nigeria has three layers, okay, where the economy is happening. Two are almost, you can collapse them one into the other, okay. You have the BOP, you have the MOP, you have the COP, okay, sorry, you have the bottom of the pyramid, things are happening. You know the informal sector where all of us go, 90% of us are buying things from Sule and Mama, Latar and everything. We don't have a grasp yet of what is happening in that sector. We don't, for instance, is what we call the unrecorded sector. Okay, broadly well, speaking, if I, the unrecorded. Let me just understand what you're hold saying. On. So you have to get some harmony between the bottom of the pyramid, the middle of the pyramid, and this one, because the bottom is providing middle class at various levels to the, and then you have to look at the top of the pyramid, where they are doing all this mega one billion dollar business. Their needs, their policy needs, their implementation needs, Okay. They are, you know, are different.